Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, sponsored by the National Health Association. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and today I'm absolutely delighted to have as my guest, uh, Wendy Pett. Uh, Wendy is a naturopathic physician, a uh, Christian health coach, which we're going to talk a little bit about. She's also the founder of the Visibly Fit Health and Fitness Program and the TV channel of the same name, Visibly Fit TV, which has uh, garnered some uh, accolades and awards. She is on the advisory board for Christian Women in the Media and has also written a book called Every Woman's Guide to Personal Power. Welcome, Dr. Pett. How are you? Welcome to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association, the oldest organization in the world, championing the extraordinary benefits of a whole plant food diet and healthy lifestyle, as well as water-only fasting. We believe that health results from healthful living and focus on evidence-based science that promotes the health of you and your loved ones, as well as the health of all animals and the environment. We feature experts from a cross-section of disciplines within the plant nutrition, vegan, psychological, environmental, and animal compassion sectors. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, the NHA's Director of Health Education. I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm good. I'm really uh, thankful and and have a lot of gratitude for you coming to be part of this today. Um, You know, people are always interested uh, when they see people of your ilk and where you are in your life about the early part of their story. You know, what was the what were the aha moments? What were the drives that got you to be interested in plant based living and natural health and in natural health care? Give us a little bit of your backstory. I think people will be interested in that. Sure. Well, regarding um, eating more whole food plant-based, it's uh, when I read the China study, actually, and that was back in, oof, I want to say 2010, something like that. And so, yeah, once I read, the, actually, I listened on, on CD, and then I read the book, and then I had the privilege of interviewing T. Colin Campbell, and he's just a delight, as you know. And um, yeah, my my life just, my I, I just changed everything that I ever thought I already knew because he, it, the, the science was there, the evidence was there, and it was just all these light bulbs went off. And I thought, how could I not change the way I was uh, consuming food and teaching my patients how to consume? Um, because before I was teaching them, you know, healthy, but there was still meat involved and, and a few things that um, were really, you know, causing more harm than good and inflammation, as we all know. And so, um, yeah, it's really opened the door to so much and so much more opportunity for healing for my patients since I've read the China study. Was when, when you made, when you were making that shift, you know, sometimes people are motivated by their own health concerns. Was there any major health issue that drove you to that? Or it was just a general knowledge and general information that drove you? Yeah. General knowledge and information and just a, a deep desire for, um, my patients to get healed. Like I really have a, um, like most practitioners, we care sometimes more for our patients than about their health than they do uh, about their own at first. And so I just really wanted to help them help themselves. Yeah. So, uh, you, so by the time you had started that you already were a practicing physician in your own right, you were taking care of patients, you were doing all of that. Right. Well, I was actually, um, y- yeah, <laughs> but I've never had a brick and mortar. So I've always been, um, Oh, okay. doing things virtually. So I was doing things through Skype way back when Yeah, I, um, I was Skype. doing online the dark ages. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was doing online before online was cool. And, and it just was the way I was able to, to reach my patients because I would speak in many different areas across the country and people would say, how do I get in touch with you? How do I get to work with you? And I thought, well, we just, I guess can do it online. And that's kind of where that started. And I'm just grateful. And now it seems so normal, just like we're having this conversation right now. It just right. seems normal to do that. I'm going to assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, that by the time you were doing that, you are already a very faith-based person. Is that correct to say at that point? That so is correct. That was yes. something that was really a major part of your life long before your transition to plant-based eating. 100%. Yes. Okay. So yeah. talk a little bit about that, how that maybe had some influence on the next step of your career and, you know, what you decided to do with your life yeah, and the, and the impact that that really has on, on you. 
Okay. Well, I would uh, tell you, I'm going to kind of make it shorter than long story, but short story is that I gave my life to Christ when I was 12 years old. And then I went really wayward. I was just a, a, a crazy kid and did a bunch of things that would not be Christian like. And I went way off uh, on my own. And then I found my way back. Thank goodness. Uh, God has a lot of mercy and grace. And so as I found my way back, um, it, it really just became so imperative that I spoke truth, I shared truth, and I I spoke and helped my my patients from the heart and helped them understand that that healthy living isn't just about the physical health, it's mind, body, spirit, emotions. And so much of it is, is the heart and the head, right? And it just needs to be connected. There's kind of just a disconnect in how people think about themselves and their spiritual walk and just kind of past traumas and dramas. And I really wanted to give them the opportunity to get really healed, not just uh, by through nutrition, but also uh, physically uh, or spiritually healed and mentally healed and, and stepping into a new way of seeing themselves. Well, you know, 12 is a pretty early age to make that kind of commitment. What what prompted that at that age? I was actually at a, a Christian, um, uh, like a camp. A girlfriend of mine took me to a camp and and so I gave my life to Christ there and, you know, I did pretty well for a while, but then, you know, high school happened and college and <laughs> we don't need to go into all the gory details, but life. I was but not really a uh, Christian like, so I'm, I'm grateful again for his mercy and his grace. And I got back on track, but, um, you know, yeah, at age 12, uh, I was, I was ready. I knew in my heart, you know? Well, you know, it's funny. We have to sometimes go through that dance to find our way back to the place we never really left. Yeah. That divine, that divine part of who we are in connection with something bigger than ourselves. So it's a, that's a very profound journey in its own right. Yeah. And, uh, and I know that in, in your motto, and I noticed it and I liked it is that the way you have approached things is you've got a, a three-step process, God first, family second, business third, which is kind of intriguing because your life of service is part of that, that trinity of how you look at, you know, the world and your practice and your business, which is interesting. I think it's For a, sure. a, yeah. profound, a profound way to operate, so to speak. Well, the way I look at it is that we're all here. Uh, we've got a purpose and a calling on our life. And this body that we have is a gift. And I feel that as we are taking care of our body, if we saw it more as an act of worship, not like in idolatry kind of ways, but as an act of worship and taking care of ourselves in that way, it, it changes the way we we start to view food on our plate and 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 uh, the way in which we move or don't move and the way in which we think or don't don't think. Um, seeing ourselves as as just moving through uh, life as an act of worship really does. Um, I guess, help us become um, more excellent in how we operate. Well, it's interesting because the, the, the plant-centered approach with all of its ramifications to me has always been kind of an expression of Christ consciousness, meaning that it is about empathy, compassion, and love, which is yeah. the, the, the principles of, of Christ's teaching. So in many ways, that connection of harmlessness and nonviolence and understanding the impact that our choices have not only in our own lives but in things much more outside of ourselves people species the planet so it's a it's a remarkable spiritual connection just the lifestyle itself so it lends itself to the kinds of of progression you made in your own personal life which is which is profound in its own sure. right uh let's talk just uh, we'll start this because then we're going to take a little break but um I know that there were um, there was some personal injury that you had physically that led to a lot of the way you modeled your visibly fit program and bringing people into a sense that the body itself is their gym in a way they can actually use the weight bearing within the context of their own body to do anything you could actually do in a gym. And that was always important to me because, you know, growing up the way I did in New York city and all that, I remember just doing exercise at a bus stop. You know, I'd be squatting, holding a pole, sitting on a bench, doing dips. And That's so awesome. no matter where I, no matter where I was, I could adapt some kind of movement to that. And I love the fact that a lot of the way you teach is built around that, this idea that, you know, the gym's always with you in your own body and in your own life. Talk a little bit about the evolution of that visibly fit approach. And then we'll, we'll, we'll spend a little more time with that. Cause I think. It's sure. Profound. 
Yeah, so um, I'm a Texas girl, but I live in Minnesota, and I've been here about 26 years now. And I was on a snowmobile, and this is how it all got started, and it was in 2011 as well. And I ended up hitting a big chunk of ice on the road that I was on, and I, I lost control of my sled, and I ended up hitting a snow-covered culvert and went flying through the windshield of the sled, and I hit a tree. And I was unconscious, and... Um, you know, it felt like a, a near death experience. I had uh, just peace. There was just a, an interesting, uh, beautiful bliss and peace that I experienced. But for some reason, it wasn't my time to go. But long story short, I broke my clavicle, tore a bunch of uh, shoulder muscles, had a swollen eye, like all kinds of things. I, I look like a mess. But I ended up going to the orthopedic surgeon and he wanted to do surgery on my shoulder. And I'm fairly stubborn and I wanted to do things naturally. I knew there would be a, a way to do it. I was already performing exercises that I teach today in some capacity. And I just started uh, just doing them more and also enhancing them. And I actually um, healed my body naturally within three months. And the orthopedic surgeon was shocked that I could do that. So uh, it, it just takes a little patience. I, I believe that God did design our bodies to heal naturally. Uh, there are those moments when, of course, there needs to be some intervention. But if we would give it the right tools, the right nutrients um, and, and the protocols, then, then the body is is made to heal. Yeah. So that that uh, we're going to take just a very short break. I'm here okay. with Dr. Wendy Pat. We're talking about her visibly fit program. And uh, we're going to take just a short break to hear from our sponsor, the National Health Association. You're listening to the NHA Health Science Podcast. Dr. Frank Sabatino here, encouraging you to check out the NHA membership. For just $35 a year in the US and $55 internationally, you'll have access to a wealth of resources, including our quarterly full color print magazine, Health Science. Stay updated on the latest health tools, inspiring stories, and exclusive events like the NHA conference and plant exclusive cruises. Join us at healthscience.org forward slash membership and make a difference in your life and the world. I'm Dr. Frank Sabatino, your host, and now back to the NHA Health Science Podcast, where more exciting insights await you. Welcome back to the Health Science Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I'm here with Dr. Wendy Pett, and we're talking about this, uh, this profound health and fitness program she created called Visibly Fit. So um, when someone comes to you, uh, I know that you're doing obviously all kinds of lifestyle counseling because you're dealing with fitness, you're dealing with nutrition, you're dealing with spiritual balance and so many things that are connected to what being healthy is all about. So um, how do you take, let's say we take an elder person, let's take them through Visibly Fit and they have some limited ranges of motion, limited things that they can do, how do you approach them? What, what do you do with them? And this is all done basically online, you say? It's not really it is. a setting. Okay. That's correct. It's all online. So it really depends on the need of the patient, um, depending on if they've got knee issues, back issues. So we work around with their injury or debilitating uh, issues, or if they're just looking to get stronger, have more functional movement, we just go through and do an assessment if, at first, right? But then I really teach them um, how to understand the mind, uh, mind muscle connection, how you can re really visualize and imagine a weight in your hand. So if you want to imagine it with me right now, like if you're going to do a bicep curl, if you imagined 20 pounds in your hand or 25 pounds and slowly brought that weight up to your shoulder, right? With slow controlled resistance and then slowly bring that heavy weight down you can feel the activation of the muscle from the um, uh, just the front and also even in the triceps. So it's the it's the positive and negative um, muscles working at the same time. But it's it's un getting them to understand that wow, I don't need to go to the gym. I don't need to lift a weight. I can actually visualize it and get the same effect. And it doesn't put stress on their joints, their tendons, their ligaments, and they're able to build muscle. They're able to build muscle maybe around an injured area. They're maybe even able to um, build muscle in areas where it's it's going to 
be uh, beneficial. So it'd be uh, preventative. Like if they were to fall, like I live in Minnesota, a lot of these elderly people may fall on ice or something. So we want to strengthen their body and not put wear and tear on their joints. And so this is what Visibly Fit really allows. So Wendy, in terms of that, uh, because they're online with you, um, obviously they find you. We're going to talk about where they can go to find you. But um, I'm assuming you have people from all over the country. Is that what happens because you're online? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So when you do your consultation work, I know you do an intake and all of that. It's not as easy to do online, I gather, but I know you do it. Um, so they're given also nutrition programs. They're given all of these kinds of various lifestyle components of the program, basically. Correct. So they get meal plans and grocery lists and recipes at, and the full library of workouts and, and all of that. And then we do coaching um, and um, accountability groups every week, um, questions, Q&A kind of things. Yeah, it's, it's high level and accountability. What, and what entails when you, when you call it Christian health coaching, how, how do you weave the yeah. religious aspect of that into what you do. Talk a little bit about that. That's a great that. question. Yeah. So we always start our time together with prayer and devotion. Um, and then also uh, we have an area where we pray for one another. Um, it, it's really just that kind of component that's, it's kind of like an underlying understanding between everyone there. People are praying for one another. Um, it's really allowed for more connection and more bonding and it's just been beautiful. It's been beautiful to see the um, the camaraderie, if you will, and and to I guess people don't feel so alone. Like you know, it's it's that tribe, and they they know they're being prayed uh, prayed up and and lifted up in prayer, not just by me, but by the entire uh, group. And that's really been beneficial. Let me ask you a question because I'm I'm assuming a lot of people come to you that already have a Christian bent. So in a way, you're speaking to and to working with the choir. But do you find that you have people that come to you that weren't really faith based at all? And then as they work with you, that becomes something that's more they're more open to. Do you see that happening in the kind of work you do, too? I actually do. And I'm glad you asked that question. Now, I don't get a lot of that because I definitely am, you know, forward with the faith. Um, but I have had people come in that have just kind of you know, either been, um, we call it like church hurt. And so they no longer have been a part of the church. And so maybe it's kind of a coming back to, to reading God's word and understanding how much they're loved and forgiven and, and all the things. Um, and it gets them into a better place with their faith. That's, that's happened. But I've also had, um, atheists that want me to pray for them. I've had Buddhists that want me to pray for them. Like, it's very interesting to me. I mean, they stay in their, their same lane. They haven't come over to, to, to the faith that I practice and that's okay, but they still want the prayer. Like they still know that well, my heart million is million dollar question. Who, who does the atheist want you to pray to? Which is interesting. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, exactly. That's was, that was always my thought, <laughs> but but they ask, they ask, they would even say, you forgot your prayer. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, it's interesting. So you've been recognizing a little bit of the power of prayer, regardless, right? of, regardless of belief system. It's interesting. Right. Even if very, they are atheists. <laughs> very, very, very intriguing. Ask I'm here me. with Dr. Wendy Pet. Wendy, let people know where they can find you if they want to pursue you and work with you. What's sure. the location that they can find you at? Yes, they can just go to wendypet.com. And I've got um, actually seven of those exercises I was describing to you earlier. I've got those for free. If they just want to sign up and get those uh, right there and get that right into their email, they can do that. I think that's fantastic. Look, you made a point before that one of the things we see in long live communities is that they do have that tribal sense. They have that con spiritual connection to other people in the community. That community connection is such a big part for human beings. Because you're online, is there some way you engender that with your people? Do they get put into focus groups or any way where they feel connected to other people that you've worked with so that there's kind of an ongoing group now that of people that you've counseled? Does that yes, happen within your work? Definitely. So we go into, so my program is a seven week program. And okay. then after that, there's like a maintenance program, but I have had people in there literally for seven and eight years. They met their goal a long time ago, but they do not leave. 
and it's fascinating to me. And yet it's, it's not me. It's, it's the fact that we are just this beautiful tribe. We're a community and they don't want to go anywhere and they are also contributing. So they are, are feeling valued as well. And there's just something so profound and so wonderful about that. It's like, yeah, it's so like a small group. It's beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring up something that sometimes can be a little bit of a dilemma. I want to see if it is for you or not. And that is when you do the work you're doing, like we do, you know, we see people recover and they recover and they reverse very serious problems most of the time. And many of them are on medication that they don't really need. And once they make these healthy changes, there's not a need to take it the same way. So I'm going to assume that as people work with you, some of that happens. But because they probably also have primary care docs who may not be anywhere near the same page that you're on, do you ever find any conflict with the people you're working with as they go back and have to now deal with some of their primary care people? How do you, how do you dance around that, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. And that is a great question. Um, you know, it's interesting because it depends on, on the patient, but I'm really trying to encourage them to be bold and to, to speak, um, Frank, <laughs> Frank, uh, with their, with their physicians, because sometimes their phys physicians just don't know. And so sometimes they are educating them, which is fascinating and wonderful. And they are like kind of blown away learning that, wow, this, you, you got off this medication or we need to wean you down off of, you know, your high blood pressure meds or, or whatever it is in that moment or their diabetic medication, because you're eating plants, you're eating a plant-based, you know, uh, you're living that lifestyle. Tell me more. And so they're kind of just fascinated, but I'm, I'm just encouraging them to be bold in, in sharing with their doctor because a lot of them, they just don't know. Um, but I don't think they feel conflicted too much. I think they're really, um, feeling that they feel good and they want to tell their doctor, they want to educate them so that hopefully they can educate more of their own patients. Uh, let's, let's talk about something else connected to Visibly Fit because you've been on the advisory board for Christian women in the media. So you've really taken that jump with Visibly Fit TV and this media jump. Talk a little bit about that. What, what do you accomplish with Visibly Fit TV? Who does it reach? And how do you see your place as a Christian woman in the media? Let's talk a little bit about that. That's great. Um, yes. Yeah, so Visibly Fit was actually a, um, a television show that I had on many different Christian um, networks, but I also have the Visibly Fit podcast. And so being um, a Christian woman in media, um, it's it's one of those things that, um, you know, it, it, it used to be kind of a good old boys club uh, right. in, in that space. And so there is a group of us that are, are really rising up and, and, and sharing what God has put on our heart and, and sharing our gifts and our talents because um, God has given us a voice, right? And so we need to use it so that we can better the kingdom. And so that's just, that's my goal is to just use my gifts and talents and my voice to, to inspire, encourage, and to help others get, um, get healed. Uh, he once downloaded in me uh, the, the term revealer healer. And I believe that people need to, to have that revelation so that they can um, be healed, you know, revelation of, of maybe not making the right choices and, and, and figuring out what's going to be a better path for them. And just, just, you know, acknowledging is usually the first step, right? Acknowledging that they're not in a good health space and then finding someone that they're going to resonate with, whether it's myself or somebody else, but someone else that they can resonate with that will help them along their journey, mind, body, spirit, emotions, and really get them on that trajectory of living their best, healthiest life. And that's my goal. So is that how you do the programming on Visibly Fit TV? It's kind of like giving witness to everything you just said, basically? Yeah, part of and it, you, for and sure. You, and you bring special guests on too, like other people that you Absolutely. feel are motivators and, and that Absolutely. kind of thing. And how, but, when, when does that air and how often does it air? Oh, it airs on different networks at different uh, days and times. So I, I can't really tell you that. But uh, okay. yeah. So um, also, but the podcast airs every week, every Monday. Um, but I don't have just Christians on. I've I've had a few non-Christians on because they have incredible information. And so I, I don't want to limit it and have just kind of this um, tunnel vision that only Christians can come on my show, right? But I definitely let my audience know if they are the same faith or not, just so that they're aware. 
Yeah, Wendy, you had a, I want to touch on two separate things, but one of the things I know your concern is about families and single moms with children and that, and you have this thing called grace in action. I love that phrase. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about what that kind of, what that program is about, what that mission is about, that grace in action mission. Well, I was a single mom for eight years. And so I know firsthand what it can be like to, to um, raise a child when you're, you're struggling and you're only making one income. And I really wanted to provide a way to help other women that may have be, may be struggling a little bit and not to give them a handout, but to really give them a hand up. We've bought, um, you know, different women computers so that they could get, you know, their next level of, of whatever they needed to do for education so that they could provide more for, for their children. We've bought, um, you know, food, we've bought, um, education. I've, I've brought women into my program, uh, so that they could be a good example for their families. And they have released incredible amounts of weight and have taught their children how to be healthy and well. So there's just different aspects of it, depending on the need of the, of the woman, um, but we really just want to give a, a, a hand up and not just a handout. So have you, has there been a community outreach part of that, or is that also just online? It's, it's just been online. Well, I take that back. There has been two that I've met with in person and it's been amazing, amazing. But the rest of it has actually been online, um, via email or, or I just send something to them, uh, through Amazon, whatever their needs are. But I really just want to get them into a place where they feel empowered so that they don't feel like they're just down and out and always stressed out and eating junk food because they can't afford or they don't, or they're not educated on how to eat healthy in a, in a cost-effective way. Yeah, that's such an important uh, thing that we all have to be a little more concerned about, especially with the subsidy programs that so so dramatically support trash and garbage eating yeah. and, oh, it's and these horrible. foods that are only hurting, especially more disenfranchised communities too. Yeah, yeah. It's and the other thing I want to touch on, I gather in your travels, you were very affected by what you witnessed in India. So you created this, uh, you're part of this Gospel for Asia program, helping neglected women and children in India specifically. What is it about India that really touched your heart and, and, and moved you into that mission? So, yeah, so I, I have been a part uh, with them for a while. And again, it's, it's a, the movement of helping women. So th- because women tend to be the nucleus of the family when it comes to their health and well-being and, and you know, just nurturing and, and all of those things. And so I really wanted to um, extend uh, my hand, so to speak, in even in India, especially with this Gospel for Asia group, because they are helping with micro lending. Uh, they're helping them, um, you know, start their own businesses so that they can start to uh, provide for for their families because they're just single women and they're kind of just, you know, cast aside uh, in, in India. They're not really um, um, looked upon very favorably being a single parent and and obviously in the slums that's very difficult so we want to get them out of there and to get them empowered and and get them working again so they can feed their children and feed them well so in the context of that environment around those slums and so on that seems to be a pretty big challenge to get them to be somewhat sustainable so i imagine there's a lot of inertia that has to be overcome or a lot of pressure probably for decades, maybe even centuries of how women are perceived in that environment. So I would imagine that that's a, an arduous task to really get that thing going. It is. And there's, there's a huge outreach uh, through Gospel for Asia, and they are really um, educating these women. And so uh, it's starting to create a ripple effect, which is incredible. So it is making a difference in what they're doing with these micro lending opportunities and, and, and empowering these women uh, so that they don't feel like they ha- this, is, this is their lot in life, that they're going to just remain in the slums. Our goal is to get them out and also to obviously share the love of Christ with them and let them know that they're not an outcast and that they, yeah. Is supporting. that something you do actually do in person? Do you travel to India? I, I did. Here? Yes. I was there for about 13 days and spent time with them and, and helped educate and, and, and just love on these women. And it was just a, a really beautiful experience. Yep. 
Right. So I know I know uh, uppermost in in your your dance as we talked about it is the family comes very is very uh, precedent for you. Yeah. So tell me how Wendy takes care of Wendy and her family and those kind of things. What what's the kind of things you do as a family that are you know supportive elements that the audience could really relate to? Well, uh, as far as how we take care of ourselves, fitness, or, yeah. You know, uh, okay. community, whatever you guys did. Just curious about your own life a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's really important to, um, you know, prep our food so that we have them uh, and have them readily accessible so that we're not scrambling. Like a lot of families are just, you know, like opening up the refrigerator door and saying, okay, what can we eat instead of actually thinking about it intentionally and preparing. So we definitely prepare and um, prep ahead. That makes a big difference for my husband and I, my son is in the space force. He's 24. And so he's on his own. Uh, but um, you know, I, I taught him, I taught him to eat well and I know he's eating well in the space force. And that makes me feel so good because That's again, good. we as women tend to be the nucleus of the family. And if I always say that more is caught than taught. So even if they're not fully on board, if you just start taking care of you, they are watching. Your kids are watching your, your family's watching and they see how good you're, you're feeling and how uh, much energy you have and all the things and what you teach. Then they, they, they start to to come back to that, right? It's just kind of like faith. <laughs> they yeah, come they, back. They, like, they know. They know like, the foundation. Like, like you and I did. We went wayward and we circled back, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right. Especially if they've been given that information in a yeah. solid, loving way early in life. It is something they can circle back to. They kind of, it seems to me with children, I raised five children. It, it always seems that there's that thing just kind of lurks in their mind. And at the strangest times, it'll surface and they'll come back and use it. Even if not 100% commitment, it, it weaves into their life somehow. Yeah. And so I think we do such a service by laying that that the, that groundwork early on in their lives. It's very profound. Yeah. Are you mostly involved see. in your own Visibly Fit program? Is that what you do for you? In terms oh, definitely. Of oh, definitely. Yeah. So my husband and I, we have a routine. We have our devotions uh, and prayer time together, together in the mornings, which we are so grateful that we have the opportunity to do that. Not every couple does. Um, but gosh, we we kind of do like stations. Uh, I, we have the rebounder. I have the the vibration plate. We we do the infrared sauna. I, then I do my visibly fit seven by eleven exercises, which is what you get for free on wendypet.com. And we just kind I kind of have this routine, right? And um, it's just it's it, it just seems natural for us. Um, but for most people, they would say, "Oh my gosh, that's so many things that you do." But it just it just flows, and it's it's. It works for us, and it really keeps us healthy and well, and um, keeps our body from well, it's, you know from it's disease. Whenever you get into the patterns of things, yeah, they become second nature. And, yeah. and sometimes when you're looking outside at that, and you haven't done that, it looks like it's a chore. Yeah, but in right. many ways, it becomes an inspiration. And and so as you do it, uh, it, it's almost second nature, like brushing teeth or preparing a meal. It's just become second nature to do that life sustaining activity, you know what totally. I mean? And I and think people out in the audience, uh, if they're not at that stage, will get there if they stick with it and they'll see how much it integrates into everything that they are. And that's a beautiful transition when it happens, you know? And we, we are big, big, big on sleep hygiene. Yeah, <laughs> That's big a big thing. Yeah. It's a big so. deal. Big, big mm -hmm. deal. So what's on the horizon for you, Wendy? What is it? What are things that you would like to accomplish that you haven't done or that you're in the process of trying to do now? That's a great question, Dr. Frank. Oh, my. You know, right now I'm just in the middle of, of my podcast mainly and bringing on some incredible guests. I need to have you on. That'd be awesome. That'd be fun. Um, yeah. So I really want to inspire, want to encourage, want to bring more people into the Visibly Fit 7-Week Accelerator course because of the fact it's 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 just benefiting so many people. And sometimes I feel like... Um, you know, there, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot right. of people saying a lot of things, but we, we want to get people just like most of your guests, right? They, they have, they have the solution. And so um, people want to try this and try that. And I'd really just want people to get with me or somebody else, one of your other guests that is on the vegan or whole food plant-based uh, lifestyle movement to really get them healthy, uh, healed and whole. And uh, that's, that's my goal. I just really want to reach as many as I can. And I'd really like to reach the church. The church, um, it's, it's, it's troubling to me 
that the church is pretty unhealthy. Yeah. And we should not be. We should well, that's, be in a different that's place. That's why many years ago, Victoria Moran did that movie, A Prayer for Compassion, where she really, really went through the world's religions and their leaders and really started to look at, you know, how can these religions talk about the things they do and then support eating habits and lifestyle habits that are completely the opposite of that. Right. And right. so what, that's such a very important piece that yeah. you just brought up, really uh really letting the whole thing resonate on a consistent course. Very, very important. Very, very powerful. Yeah, something has to be done there for sure. And it starts from the, the pulpit, really. Yeah. So as, you, as we wind this thing down a little bit, do you have any final words you'd like to share with the audience out here? Um, I, I think just if you have never gotten on this track, give it a go. Give it a go. I promise you will be amazed. You will be amazed at how much better you feel, how much more clearly you can think. And um, just the the way in which your um, body responds when you're eating whole food plant-based or if you go vegan, but also moving your body. Just I, I think I would say just just do it and, and don't um, come up with all the excuses that we all have had or have had in the past. The excuses will always be there, but we can override those. We got to change the way we think and change the way we treat our treat our bodies. I want. I can't thank my guest uh, Wendy Pet enough. I really thank her for sharing uh, your heart, your faith, your your information, and I urge all the audience out there to follow Wendy and see if there's uh, some place that that can be for you when you need help and, and you know she's there and you can reach out and you can see her location scrolling across the screen in the show notes. And I want to thank everyone that joined us today, because without you, we can't do what we do. And I want to thank you for being part of this very active and healthy community. And on behalf of the National Health Association, I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino, and I look forward to being with you on the next episode of the Health Science Podcast. Thank you so much, Wendy. Really, thank you. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to the Health Science Podcast, brought to you by the National Health Association. Thank you for joining us today and for your commitment to evidence-based health science that backs a whole food plant exclusive lifestyle and contributes to the well-being of all people, animals, and our environment. I'm your host, Dr. Frank Sabatino. Be sure to leave a rating and a review, and we'll see you on the next show.